My name is Sarah Wilkinson. I'm the wife to Chad Wilkinson, who is a Navy SEAL, served alongside Marcus. Chad and I are both military kids. Uh, our fathers were both active duty and we lived on a military base. We met the first day of high school and I just had a crush on him from the minute I saw him. His dad was a SEAL. His uncle was also a SEAL. Probably from about the age of 12 or 13, he knew that he wanted to be a SEAL. You know, we bought our first home and we were a young married couple living in Virginia Beach. He was working amongst they're the best of the best. Things were fine in the beginning. He was gone a lot. I know one year he was gone 297 days. 2008 is when death started happening though. He didn't really say a lot. He didn't necessarily reach out to a lot of friends. And these are all things that you just say, well, that's just how he is. And so it's really easy as a spouse to kind of always put them in this bucket of that's just how they are. That's what I did with Chad. And then things would progressively get worse. He started to get, uh, I'll call it short fused. And just as time went on, you still just chalk it up to that's just how they are. You know, they're gone so much, of course he wants to stay home and just kind of seclude himself. I just thought he was really stressed. You know, he didn't seem very happy. I had to go away to work. And my daughter called me on Saturday and she said, dad is just laying on the landing of the stairs and he's just staring at the ceiling and he's been there for hours. On Sunday, I was driving back home and he called me and he said, I, I just, I love you. I love you so much. And I said, I love you too. And I got home and when I walked into our bedroom, I said, I'm, I'm gonna go get in the shower, you know, just come in and talk to me because he just seemed tired. I asked him to pass me a towel and he passed me a towel and when he looked at me, he had like the prettiest blue-green eyes. But his, his eyes were just glass. And I just thought, if I can just keep him next to me in bed and hold his hand, then I'll make them feel better, you know? But I remember opening my eyes and he wasn't in bed. I couldn't find him. I thought maybe he left for work, you know? Maybe he was working out, maybe he went for a ride. That's really weird. The cops came to my door. I said, can we move farther away from the window? Cause my daughter's right there. And we moved out into the street and uh, that's when the cop told me that he'd taken his life. I was so shocked, you know, because he was unbreakable. So I thought <laughs> I would have done anything to help him. So I was sitting in Chad's funeral. I looked around and I saw the faces of so many guys that I had seen at so many funerals. I just made a vow to myself, to Chad, to Sarah, that I would share our story and Chad's memory to avoid suicide becoming an epidemic in our community. Amber did share with me that at Chad's funeral was kind of the catalyst of really pushing vets into fruition and, and what it's becoming. And that means a lot to me, you know? I think vets has the potential to do amazing things. I've been around the guys that have gotten treatment. I've listened to them talk about the ways that they've changed. I've had those people reach out and say like, this saved his life. You know, he's a totally different person. 
I can look back now and think of signs and symptoms and things that just didn't make sense as it relates to Chad. But if you would have asked me how he was prior to his death, I'm not so sure I could so clearly point those things out. I just want the wives to be really informed at all the different ways this may or may not show itself. And just because signs and symptoms aren't definitely clear doesn't mean that there isn't a struggle. And they just need to reach out. <laughs>